Hello and welcome to another episode of The Average EV. On the internet, I've been seeing a lot of be people talking about that it's more expensive to fuel EVs, it's more expensive to fuel internal combustion engines. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna dig into the data and see what the reality is. So I did a bunch of research. I'm gonna present um, it kind of condensed to you all. Um, it'll be available for you all, but it's kind of interesting what I found out and I hope you all will stick around to see what I found in my research. Let's get into it. All right, everybody. So like I said before, um, I've seen a lot of conjecture and I just want to see what does the data really tell us? Um, before I dig into the data and show you everything, I wanted to bring up a couple cave caveats. So first things first, I had to decide where I was gonna pull all the data from. And so I pulled the data from uh, fueleconomy.gov. So this is all the EPA estimates and everything like that. Um, so you can agree or disagree with that. I acknowledge that some things might be a little bit um, rosy eyed when it's presented to the EPA. Some things actually might be lower than reality. So hopefully that all kind of um, you know levels it out. I know it won't, but um, it's what I've got to work with. Second, um, as far as fuel prices is concerned, I basically was able to do like different groupings. So I did like 250, 350, 450 for um, gas. And then I did, at the time I did the research, the national average for gas prices was $3.11. And then for the EVs, I just did the um, Electrify America standard rate, the Electrify America um, member rate, and then I did some like higher end that I've seen on Tesla and Electrify American EVgo, and then maybe a lower end. And then lastly, I did the average electricity rate at home for the United States. So again, for some people it might be lower. Like for me, I'm 10 cents lower than the national average. And if you're living in California, it might be like 20, 30 cents higher. So obviously, um, as you're looking at the information and data I'm presenting, you're gonna have to know where do I fit in that range of pricing um, because it is gonna be different for everyone based on where you live. And lastly, the sample sizes for the internal combustion engine are much bigger um, than and thorough than the EV. For the EV, there aren't as many EVs out there, so it's harder to balance different categories. So. For example, for full-size SUV and mid-size SUV, based on my research, I may have missed a couple, um, but you know, there's only one that I could find of each. Um, and some people might argue whether they even belong in the category or not, but I just did based on what the manufacturer said, what EPA said, and that's what I went off of. Um, Try to remove my opinion from everything. Uh, so just you know, take everything with a grain of salt. I'm gonna include links down below so you can check out the real numbers. Um, if you wanna, you can file, make a copy, and you can mess with the numbers. I'm gonna leave it as view only, um, but yeah. So let's dig in the numbers and see what's going on. So first off, um, I kind of organized into these classes of vehicle. Not all of them are like every single class. I kind of smushed some together. So we've got the compact SUV, full-size SUV, mid-size SUV, sedan, subcompact SUV, truck, I know there's different sizes of trucks, I get it, but I just did truck and um, that's it. And then for each there is the EV versions and I kinda put the data together and, and this is what I got. So for average cost per 100 miles, and that's what I used to compare the ultimate cost, the cheapest is if you have a sedan EV and you charge it at home exclusively. And the most expensive is the truck EV, and you charge it exclusively at home. Um, sorry, sorry, you charge it exclusively on a public charging network. So that is for the sedan, it's about $6, so $5.98 per 100 miles. And for the truck EV, it's $18.60 per 100 miles. So you can see there's a pretty big gap, and then everything kind of fills in between. I'm again, not gonna read through everything, but one thing I noticed and thought was really interesting was for every class of vehicle, the EV charging at home version was always the cheapest. And then the 
internal combustion engine version was the second cheapest. And then the most expensive was always the EV charging um, out at a public network. Um, which honestly to me, based on my experience, sounds about right. And I haven't driven internal combustion engine for a while, but the thing is you get a lot more range with the internal combustion engine. So I, all this completely makes sense to me. Some things I found really interesting were for the subcompact SUVs. So this is like my Kona, um, the EX30 I'm looking at, a bunch of those different cars. The difference between the EV uh, subcompact on the road, public charging, and the EV, sorry, not the EV, and the internal combustion engine was only about 40 cents. Uh, so as far as parity between the two, the EV subcompacts are really, really close when it comes to long distance travel compar compared to their internal combustion engine counterparts. Now, what do I glean from this? Well, pretty much if you're someone and all you do is commute and you go home and you um, charge, or maybe even you have some level two charging that's pretty similar in pricing to um, home rates, that's gonna be the best option, um, except for one, uh, yeah, that's gonna be the best option, um, having an EV. So if that's your case, go for it, do it. And then if you wanna do the occasional road trip, just know you're probably gonna pay more than what it would've cost to have an internal, comb internal combustion engine, but that's all right. Now, if you're someone and you travel long distances, well then clearly an internal combustion engine vehicle um, is going to be more affordable as far as that's concerned. Specifically, hybrid um, internal, uh, sorry, hybrid electric vehicles, which ha also have an internal combustion engine still. Um, those I found in my research were the most um, cost effective for long distance travel. Um, and again, you can look through all the charts and, and whatnot, but they always can, uh, tended to come out on top. And I had actually done some research a little bit different than this, maybe like a year or so ago, and I found the same result, that the hybrids actually were most effective for long distance travel, because you can't plug a hybrid in home, you get it. Um, so, yeah, that like that's it, that's the reality. Um, and it's unfortunate, and it just is what it is. So, before I get into my final thoughts, I did want to talk about something interesting that I also found. And I'm, uh, forgive me, because I'm gonna look down to reference uh, my, compu my computer. But when I compared the trucks, um, the trucks on the road, the EVs were $18.60 per 100 miles. And at an, the, uh, the national average, which is $3.11 at the time that I did the research, it was $13.67 to travel the same 100 miles, um, which is great. Now, when you dig a little bit deeper and you look at the different vehicles I picked, and maybe this wasn't the best sample size, um, but the only ones I really had were Lightning, R1T, and then I did throw the Hummer EV. You could say I probably shouldn't have put it in there, but it's technically a truck. Um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so, but the Rivian was, 1548 per 100 miles, which is pretty close to the internal combustion engine at the national average. And then the Lightning was about $4 more than the national average. So when you look there, it's not as bad. But then uh, if you've watched anybody who's towed uh, um, with an EV, the minute you start towing, like this is gonna be basically doubled, right? Um, because most of the most of the, most of the ranges pr pretty much get cut in half when you start towing, if not more. So, if you want a truck, um, if you're going to use it for towing, probably not the best option right now. They need to start. Um, they need to create more efficient um, motors um, in combination with towing to kind of make it a little bit more realistic. Um, so, if you're purely looking at I want an EV and I want to spend less money, well, for a truck, probably doesn't make sense to go EV yet. So that's all my data. Again, I don't. I could go through all these tables and charts and I didn't want to do that for you all. Please look through them, leave comments. I know some people are gonna disagree with some stuff, but in general, I feel like I made um, 
pretty good decisions when I was kind of deciding everything um, about this. So with this data, what does it really mean? Um, and I've been thinking about this for a while, and I think that for certain use cases, the technology just doesn't exist, like I said for the trucks. It's just not ready yet. Um, you know, for people who want to go extreme long distances, it's just not ready yet. You know, we need to have cars that have the same size battery packs, but can go, you know, 50, 60, 70, 100% further um, than our current EVs for the math to really add up for long distance travel. Um, now, for me personally, uh, I don't drive an EV because of money reasons. Obviously, since I charge at home a lot, I do save money. Um, but it's, you know, for obviously environmental factors, I know that's a loaded thing. However, for the most part, we can slowly transition our fuel source, well, where we get our electricity from, to greener uh, energy. So um, I'm, I'm all about that. Obviously, there's the zero immediate tailpipe emissions, um, which is nice. I also have solar, so a lot of my fuel source is solar anyways. Um, I know that's not everybody's case. Additionally, I just find EVs to be a much more comfortable ride. Um, you know, don't you don't smell the gas, uh, <laughs> you don't feel the car rumble, and you know, I just can't ever see myself going back to an internal combustion engine car. In fact, when my Kona got totaled, I was like losing my mind in the uh, what do they have a Mitsubishi some Mitsubishi um, SUV, and I just went it out immediately. So I don't know. I, I think this is interesting. I. I don't want to say I'm like a little depressed, but it's just, I, I wish it was like better to tell everybody that, yeah, you can travel long distances and it's cheaper, uh, but it, it's it's just really not there yet, um, unfortunately. So that's it. That's all I really have to say. It's just like, it's a loaded question. It's cheaper at home for EVs, more expensive on the road. That's just what it is. So again, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please leave them down below. Um, and if you want me to add any other vehicles, I can add them um, into the spreadsheets to kind of change the numbers a little bit. I I did go through every EV listed, so I think I got all the big ones. Um, but if I miss any, let me know and I'll put them down. So, yeah, that's it. Thanks again for watching. I hope you um, enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. If you did, please remember to give a like and a subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Heck, even share the video. And I will catch you all next time.